welcome to Daily Debrief brought to you by People's Dispatch. I am Shriya and today we talk about the Ukraine war as reports emerge of a missile landing in Poland. Meanwhile, Israel is angry that the FBI has opened an investigation into the Shireen Abu Akhle killing. And finally, we take a look at why the internet giant Google has agreed to pay a $390 million settlement on privacy issues. In the early hours of November 16, a missile hit a Polish village about 6 kilometers from the Ukrainian border and killed two people. Initial findings reported by the Associated Press suggest the missile was fired by Ukrainian forces at an incoming Russian missile. We're joined by Abdul from People's Dispatch on this issue. Welcome to the show, Abdul. So, a lot of confusion on what has happened and who is responsible for it. Can you tell us what information do we have so far? Well, uh, as per the latest reports, there are no confusion now. Uh, the various uh, reports, including uh, the US President Joe Biden and uh, the Turkish President Erdogan, they have stated uh, categorically that the missile f which l landed in Poland was basically a Ukrainian missile. It was a, a kind of a, a, a part of S-300 uh, defense, anti-missile uh, defense system which basically was fired on the Russian missiles, but it basically landed in Ukraine. So that, uh, sorry, Poland, that part mm. is quite clear now. Uh, uh, the confusion was created primarily because the uh, Ukrainian President Zelensky uh, claimed that this, the missile which landed in uh, Poland was basically fired by Russians and it is past, part of the Russian uh, attacks, aggression on different parts of Ukraine, uh, which is already ongoing. Despite the fact that Russians issued an early statement claiming that the missile has nothing to do with the uh, Russians, uh, the overall propaganda machinery which is working uh, in, in the war in particular, we have seen it, uh, uh, the use of social media in particular has basically contributed to the, uh, the overall confusion claiming that this is an attack on a NATO member, Poland being hmm. the NATO member. And hence, there is a possibility of the escalation of the war in which the uh, NATO will directly be involved. So, but uh, thankfully, uh, uh, the statements made by Russians have been verified and uh, uh, as per now, there is no uh, threat for further escalation. Yeah. Also, Abdul, Poland is a NATO member and there's been a lot of alarm regarding that. So, how do we see the West responding to this event? As I said before, thankfully, uh, the US Turkey, these are the NATO members, of course, they have uh, by and large agreed that the missile which landed in uh, Poland was not uh, launched by Russia. And it was uh, basically an accident, uh, the Ukrainian missile landed in uh, uh, Poland. The, the basic question is, wha what is the intention behind Zelensky and uh, the, uh, the pro-Ukrainian media in particular uh, claiming and trying to emphasize the fact that this is a, a Russian aggression against a NATO member. Uh, uh, if we see uh, in the absence of the wider uh, negotiations, the talks which is required to basically uh, end the war and create a kind of peaceful situation in the, in the region, there has been a deliberate attempt uh, made by various leaders, including the Ukrainian president in the past, uh, of uh, dragging the NATO directly into the war. NATO is already there in the war, providing armaments to Ukrainians. So indirectly, it is a proxy war between the NATO and the Russians. But uh, Zelensky in particular and some other leaders have tried to make it a direct war between NATO and uh, Russia. Uh, if you remember, uh, 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 Zelensky had uh, talked about uh, uh, no-fly zones over Ukraine yes. in the initial days of the war. Uh, then also the U.S. refused, claiming that this may lead to direct confrontation with the Russian forces. Hmm. And uh, there had been claims made on various occasions about Russia's involvement uh, uh, in uh, human rights violations, large-scale human rights violations in different points, uh, parts of the territory. Uh, then there has been claims of kind of uh, 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 involvement of for foreign mercenaries in the war in uh, uh, from the Russian Side. So this is all part of a constant attempt by the Ukrainian uh, establishment to establish that the war is acquiring a global uh, uh, nature 
and hence there is a need of direct intervention uh, from NATO. Uh, it is dangerous, it can lead to uh, uh, un, uh, unforeseen uh, events mm. and uh, uh, thankfully the, the, the leaders uh, involved uh, in the entire process have uh, not uh, for, uh, f uh, fell for uh, those uh, provocations. Uh, if we summarize all of this, uh, uh, this event in particular uh, uh, shows the possibilities of an accident misused and uh, uh, kind of leading to an escalation, uh, escalation which is no one, which no one wants. Right. And hence, this is a high time that all the parties uh, should sit together and mm. negotiate. Thank you so much, Abdul. We'll come back to you for our next story. In our next story, FBI has opened investigation into the killing of Palestinian journalist Shireen Abu Akleh. The U.S. Justice Department informed its Israeli counterparts on Monday. 51-year-old Akleh was fatally shot by Israeli forces while covering a raid in the occupied West Bank city of Jenin in May. Israel has responded angrily, calling it an interference in its internal affairs. Abdul is back for latest updates. So, Abdul, yes. Uh, why is the investigation happening now? Is there a reason for this choice of timing? Uh, we don't know, frankly speaking. Uh, there are, can be many speculations. Uh, primarily, uh, uh, if we see the reason behind this delayed attempt to start a re uh, start an investigation, should be attributed to uh, the midterm elections which were due uh, in US and the elections in Israel. So now that both of them are over, the the Biden administration felt that now it is time to respond to. The, uh, the uh, repeated uh, 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 appeals uh, and uh, demands made by not only uh, Shirin Abu Akhle's family members, because she was a US citizen, uh, also uh, by various human rights organizations who have claimed that Iraq, what Israel has done uh, mm. in this case is yet another example of the 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 uh, the, the historical impunity which uh, uh, Israel enjoys in the uh, occupied Palestinian territories and uh, it violates the human rights, it kills the Palestinians, it kills journalists and international human rights activists in the past and nothing has happened against it. So it is right time uh, that given the fact that uh, uh, Shirin was a US citizen, you should uh, uh, basically investigate and take an action. Given the, uh, we need to emphasize the fact that US and Israel, uh, because of their uh, ties, hmm. uh, it, it, it is always difficult for the U, any US administration to basically take a stand and uh, start such kind of, uh, 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 such kind of move against Israelis. And therefore it was delayed uh, we can guess and now that the elections are over a new administration is yet to take over there is a gap in between the US administration can kind of uh, think of uh, kind of uh, starting an investigation now. But Abdul there have been similar probes that have taken place in the past what have those been like and what do you think this new probe can bring out possibly? Uh, frankly speaking there is hardly any uh, uh, hope at max if uh, the investigations earlier have already established in in a very conclusive manner that uh, uh, Shirin Abu Akhle was killed by an Israeli uh, uh, soldier and uh, all the claims made by Israel that uh, Shirin was killed in an in a accident during a crossfire between Palestinians with Palestinian armed groups and so on and so forth have been refuted not only by Palestinian uh, investigations but also by uh, investigations conducted by international independent media groups uh, hmm. and human rights organizations based in different parts of the world. So uh, there is no doubt uh, when it comes to who is responsible for killing it. So US investigation, what will it uh, achieve? We don't know. It, uh, we, we have uh, uh, evidence that you, uh, and it is already in public uh, domain that US had uh, basically endorsed the earlier Israeli version of it being an accident when in, in July it basically issued a statement saying that Shirin's uh, uh, assassination was 
assurance that was basically a, 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 a result of an accident. Uh, this is exactly what Israeli quote-unquote investigation in September said. So there is an ident identical statement issued by Israel and US in the past. And in that context, uh, uh, this investigation, whether it will refute the earlier stances taken by the US or it will go beyond it. And as Shirin Abu Akhle's family is claiming that the investigation should be independent, credible and so on and so forth, whether it will be that, we have to see. Uh, but given the record, historical record, given the uh, what we know about Israel and US relations, uh, it is highly unlikely that there will be any action taking, uh, taken against uh, the Israelis at this moment. Thank you so much, Abdul, for that update. Google has agreed to pay more than $390 million to settle with 40 states in the United States over charges of misleading the company's users about the collection of personal location data. The investigation was sparked by a 2018 report from the Associated Press that revealed Google was continuing to track users' location, undermining the privacy controls. Anish from People's Dispatch joins us with more details. Hi Anish, so can you tell us what was in the AP report initially and what is the controversy now? Well, in 2018 when uh, Associated Press released their uh, report uh, based on a couple of Princeton uh, University uh, research, uh, researchers' uh, way of collect uh, of uh, or their study of how Google collects data, and uh, which includes your uh, location, uh, geographic location, and uh, apart from that, a whole host of other things that Google uh, does collect on a very regular basis. And they found that even when so this is a very simple thing to say, like uh, when we log into say Google Maps and they ask for our location. Uh, or our live location, and it's not just Google Maps, but also a whole host of other apps that we use, including Chrome and other, uh, you know, search applications that Google uh, that uh, Google operates. Uh, there is a there's always this question of uh, uh, allowing Google access to your location, and even when we press no, uh, the 2018 uh, report said, uh, found that Google still continues to uh, track your location not only really track it, but also uh, completely store that data, uh, which you may not be aware of. Now, the thing is that uh, we can still access the data, definitely, uh, eventually found out about it in your accounts, uh, and you can delete those data as well. But the problem is that you're still, uh, your data is still being stored without your consent. Now, this is a very fundamental uh, question about pr uh, privacy that is uh, firstly unregulated in most places, not just the United States. The United States still has uh, laws that uh, deal with privacy and digital privacy. Uh, there are many countries around the world that do not have any sort of laws or protections for citizens, uh, especially when you're talking about the fact that Google is a foreign company for most of us, uh, and they collecting our data uh, is always a dangerous thing. Uh, but secondly, the issue is that there is very little uh, infrastructure to uh, monitor uh, how such uh, data collection happens. So definitely uh, finding that out, Google uh, argues right now that uh, its, uh, uh, its data collection policies have changed, obviously, and that uh, the probe that happened against it uh, by the court uh, has also changed and uh, and is based on outdated uh, policy uh, measures uh, which we are we still do not have ways to verify whether or not that is true in most places uh, your uh, privacy protection can also change with the kind of device that you use and the kind of device that allow, so our devices may just allow google access to our uh, it's not just location history it's also a whole host of other things our search histories even the incognito tab that uh, many people use uh, uh, for various reasons um, will still con uh, collect a, a large set of data that we may not want, not just Google, but a whole, uh, other uh, people to have access to. This is not the first time that Google is being pulled up for collecting data without people's consent. Yeah, and like you just said, so this is not the first time that Google has faced a lawsuit. It has recently and many have come up in the recent past. So is there a pushback of sorts that we are seeing? 
there is definitely a pushback uh, in the sense that because many governments are being quite uh, uh you know aware and also not just aware uh, but wary of uh, google's uh, uh, pervasiveness uh, in in most of our lives it is obviously uh, the most widely used uh, search uh, engine it also likewise is the biggest uh, deposit uh, repository of uh, personal uh, information of uh, people billions of people around the world and so uh, its uh, cap capabilities are still uh, something that most governments do not uh, have either the infrastructure or the legal uh, judicial mechanisms to regulate and monitor and so obviously we do have uh, issues uh, coming up all the time but lawsuits uh, like these uh, and not just the uh, the, uh, the one where that, that we're talking about where they find there is another lawsuit in the united states uh, where they are settling for uh, something like 85 million dollars in arizona uh, there are four other states including washington dc where uh, google is facing similar kind of lawsuits uh, for of uh, collecting uh, personal data and location history uh, previously we saw uh, the australian uh, commission an australian uh, regulatory commission finding google uh, millions of dollars uh, for doing pretty much the same thing, which is of collecting location histories without people's consent. So obviously, Google now statements about uh, changing its policy so that at, uh, your data uh, or the data that it collects, uh, to put it more precisely, is more accessible to user and uh, accessibility comes the option of deleting them in the future, but the collection will still continue. We do not know how much of that is still uh, consensual on our part because uh, there is, that, as I said, there, uh, there is very little infrastructure to actually monitor these aspects unless uh, the studies like uh, what Associated Press did uh, or published uh, in 2018 uh, are conducted on a very routine basis uh, by a whole host of researchers who understand the system itself. So this is definitely, uh, but that also shows that there is wider concerns about privacy in the current digital age, where multi-million, multi-billion, or in some in some cases, trillion-dollar companies control pretty much everything that we have access to on the internet, and it definitely requires a pushback that uh, it is seeing right now. Thank you so much, Anish, for joining us today. And that's all for today. For more such stories and updates from around the world, please keep following www.peoplesdispatch.org and also follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter.